We are trying to transform education through online technologies. Given education has been calcified for 500 years, we really cannot think about re-engineering it, micromanaging it. We really have to completely reimagine it. It's like going from ox carts to the airplane. Even the infrastructure has to change. Everything has to change. We need to go from lectures on the blackboard to online exercises, online videos. We have to go to interactive virtual laboratories and gamification. We have to go to completely online grading and peer interaction on discussion boards. Everything really has to change. So at edX and a number of other organizations, we are applying these technologies to education through MOOCs to really increase access to education. And uh, you heard of this example where when we launched our very first course, and this was an MIT hard circuits and electronics course about a year ago, year and a half ago, 155,000 students from 162 countries enrolled in this course. And we had no marketing budget. Now, 155,000 is a big number. This number is bigger than the total number of alumni of MIT in its 150-year history. 7,200 students passed the course, and this was a hard course. 7,200 is also a big number. If I were to teach at MIT two semesters every year, I would have to teach for 40 years before I could teach this many students. So our millennial generation is built differently. But so why don't we embrace technology, embrace the millennial generation's you know, predile natural predilections, and really think about creating these online technologies, blend them into their lives. So here's what we can do. So rather than driving our kids into a classroom, herding them out there at 8 o'clock in the morning, I hated going to class at 8 o'clock in the morning. So why are we forcing our kids to do that? So instead what you do, is you have them watch videos and do interactive exercises in the comfort of their dorm rooms, in their bedroom, in the, in the dining room, in the bathroom, wherever they're most creative. Then they come into the classroom for some in-person interaction. They can have discussions among themselves, they can solve problems together, they can work with the professor and have the professor answer their questions. In fact, with edX, when we were teaching our first course on circuits and electronics around the world, this was happening unbeknownst to us. Two high school teachers at the Sant High School in Mongolia had flipped the classroom, and they were using our video lectures and interactive exercises where, where the learners in the high school, 15-year-olds, mind you, would go and do these things in their own homes, and they would come into class, and as you see from this image here, they would interact with each other and do some physical laboratory work. And the only way we discovered this was they wrote a blog and we happen to stumble upon that blog that makes all of this work. One idea is active learning. The idea here is rather than have students walk into class, watch lectures, we replace this with what we call lessons. Lessons are interleaved sequences of videos and interactive exercises. So a student might watch a five, seven minute video and follow that with an interactive exercise. Think of this as the ultimate Socratization of education. You teach by asking questions. And this is a form of learning called active learning, and really uh, promoted by a very early paper in uh, 1972 by Craig and Lockhart, where they said and discovered that learning and retention really relate strongly to the depth of mental processing. Students learn much better when they are interacting with the material. The second idea is self-pacing. Now, when I went to a lecture hall, and if you were like me, by the fifth minute, I would lose the professor. I wasn't all that smart, and I would be scrambling, taking notes, and then I would lose the lecturer for the rest of the, rest of the hour. Instead, wouldn't it be nice with online technologies, we offer videos and interactive uh, engagements to students? They can hit the pause button. They can rewind the professor. Heck, they can even mute the professor. So this form of self-pacing can be very helpful to learning. The third idea that we have is instant feedback. With instant feedback, the computer grades exercises. I mean, how else do you teach 150,000 students? Your computer is grading all the exercises. And we've all submitted homeworks, and uh, your grades come back two weeks later. You've forgotten all about it. I, I don't think I've still received some of my homeworks from my undergraduate days. Someone never graded. So with instant feedback, students can try to apply answers. If they get it wrong, they can get instant feedback. They can try it again and try it again. And this really becomes much more engaging. They get the instant feedback, 
this to say about instant feedback. You know, he indicated that instant feedback turns teaching moments into learning outcomes. The next big idea is gamification. You know, all learners engage really well with interactive videos and so on. You know, they would sit down and shoot alien spaceships all day long till they get it. So we apply these gamification techniques to learning, and we can build these online laboratories. You know, how do you teach creativity? How do you teach design? We can do this through online labs and use computing power to build these online labs. So uh, as this little video shows here, you can engage students much like they design with Legos. So here the learners are building a circuit with Lego-like ease. And this can also be graded by the computer. Fifth is peer learning. So here we use discussion forums and discussions and Facebook-like interaction, not as a distraction, but to really help students learn. It's really amazing where students are learning from each other and they're telling us that they are learning by teaching. Technology to really help, the blended model can really help revolutionize education. It can also solve the practical problem of MOOCs. Because like to really reimagine education. We will have to move from lecture halls to e-spaces. We have to move from books to tablets like the Akash in India, or the Raspberry Pi, the $20, the Akash is $40. We have to move from bricks and mortar school buildings to digital dormitories. But I think at the end of the day, I think we will still need one lecture hall in our universities. <laughs> Otherwise, how else do we tell our grandchildren that, you know, your grandparents sat in that room in neat little rows like corn stalks <laughs> and watched this professor at the end, you know, talk about content, and you know, you didn't even have a rewind button. <laughs> Thank you.